should scare you all. <laughs> Recording in process. So now we internally include the cause of the what? In the cloud. In the cloud. Uh, good morning. I would like to uh, welcome you all to service today. Also to particularly welcome Gail Kramer, who has uh, supplied the process as an organist many times and is a good friend of St. James, and I'm glad that you're here this morning. Um, we have a lot of fun together. Uh, I'm not going to uh, mention it in the sermon, but I hope you get a chance to look at your bulletin cover today. Uh, I think it's just sort of humorous, and it reminds us that context counts. Uh, this is part of an altarpiece in uh, one of the Nordic countries, but it's talking about repentance, and notice it says, uh, but the guy on the left in his repentance is breaking a barrel of vodka, <laughs> and the, the man next to him is giving back a stolen reindeer. And I don't think when I thought of my own repentance ever, it occurred to me to steal a reindeer and then <laughs> have to return it. So um, different strokes and different contexts. So I, I hope you get a little bit of humor um, from that. I think our liturgy is pretty much as we uh, usually uh, celebrate it. So with that, I invite you to spend a moment centering yourselves. Um, Caring to worship God, and we'll listen to Gail um, offer a prelude for us.
You all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to us people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel. And on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 149 found in your bulletin, which we will read together. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. 
Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his favor. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in advance. Let them sing and praise to him with the world and heart. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to bring vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decree. This is glory for all the faithful people. Hallelujah. This is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, and you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have gained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two, or, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. acceptable to you, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. You know, I wish uh, at the beginning of a sermon I could give all the caveats about each of the readings before I began the sermon. I'm just going to note them really quickly. Paul, when he's writing the letter to the Romans, talks about uh, the night is far gone, the day is near, you know what time it is. And the time that he's thinking of is the second coming of Christ. But as we know, the first apostles thought that the second coming of Christ was going to happen in their lifetime, and that didn't happen. But part of the context of their writing was that thought. But we don't take the Bible literally. We take the Bible seriously. And so we ought not to get caught up in worrying about when the second coming of Christ is. Likewise, in the book of Exodus today, our reading is about the 10 plagues and the 10th plague that was going to come upon Egypt so that God could free the people from slavery in Egypt, the 10th plague was going to be killing all the firstborn of Egypt, humans and animals. And that is just totally repugnant to us. But again, we're trying to remember and figure out what is the whole message of that passage. And the whole message of that, pack, that passage is the idea that God is going to move the people from oppression and slavery in Egypt into freedom in the other land. And then likewise in the gospel, we tend to have trouble with the part where Jesus says, whatever you bind, whatever you bind, on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I don't want to have that much power. Um, but we know that that uh, is believed by some uh, churches that it is up to us. But again, Jesus, in, through Matthew's words, is talking about the formation of the church and the power of the church and not necessarily about whether you and I can tell whether someone um, will be, what their final destiny will be. So I did the caveats. But I wanna talk about um, New Year's. New Year's, it's a new year. Y'all know that? We celebrate a lot of New Year's in our lives. There's officially New Year's Day on January 1st. Many of us think of our birthdays as a new year. I love that birthday card that talks about starting a new trip around the sun. Anniversaries can be New Year's. Advent is considered the new year of the church. 
Advent, those four weeks before Christmas. And there are three New Year's events in September. The new school year. That's sort of a New Year's that we all celebrate, at least if we're parents. I think some children and youth do as well. There's University of Michigan football. <laughs> They're going to start the Big Ten schedule on September 23rd. Not that I care. <laughs> Michigan State won by 45 points, or won 45 points. Michigan won 35 points yesterday, so I think Michigan State beat Michigan. <laughs> That's my new math. <laughs> but this month also marks the high holy days of the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. It's considered the head of the year. September 15, coming up through the 17, are the one or two days of Rosh Hashanah, depending on what um, community of Judaism you belong to. And this New Year uh, lasts for 10 days, and it ends with Yom Kippur, which is considered the Day of Atonement. This New Year festival of Rosh Hashanah is considered by the Jewish people as the anniversary, anniversary of human creation. It's the anniversary of the beginning of the relationship between human beings and God, the Creator. Some other sources call it the commemoration of the creation of the world. And Rosh Hashanah is when the number of the year turns over. Like when we go from 2023 to 2024, in Rosh Hashanah, the number of the year in the Jewish calendar moves up one. But I've always been confused by this as I think about it, because our lesson from Exodus says that God is creating the Passover, and God says, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. And I started to wonder about that, because Passover happens in what season? Spring. Passover happens in spring, and you recall that the events of Jesus' crucifixion happened during the Passover. And that's why we say Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So how is it that Rosh Hashanah is the new year? And by about the second century of what Christians consider uh, the New Testament times, uh, Rosh Hashanah was a, was a festival. How is it the new year and how is Passover the new year? I didn't understand that. These people have two new years. Well, as I said, they mark, they mark different things. The one marks the freeing and the liberation that God effected for the Hebrew people to be freed from slavery in Egypt and go into the promised land and become the people of Israel. And the second new year, but really flipping back to the beginning of time, recognizes the new, recognizes creation. Now, as I thought about these two things, I thought about all the different ways, as I said, that we celebrate new years. And I wondered if anything, if there was anything in common with all these new years. And what occurred to me 
was going back to our lesson from Romans. That is to owe nobody anything except love. Owe no one anything except to love one another. And that commandment to love one another is in the Old Testament. It's the summation of the law in the Old Testament, as well as Jesus having said it, and as well as Paul having said it. The one who loves has fulfilled the law. And I want to suggest that the one who loves is the one who Jesus calls to reconcile themselves with others in the church. Jesus today is talking about how is it that a church, as in any group of people, will have conflict at some point. It's not a question about whether there will be conflict in a church. There always is at some point about something. Because we are all human beings. We are all flawed, especially by our own self-desires, by our own self-centeredness. And love asks us to consider the other first. Love asks us to be concerned about the relationship with one another and not just to push one off. And so to love one another seems to be the basis of a reconciling church. And it's also then the basis of the law. So it seems to me that a new year, well, tell me if this is true, in a, a New Year's Day, on the day of your birthday particularly, even the day of the start of school, do you ever make resolutions? Make resolutions? I'm going to be a better student this year. I'm going to get A's and B's instead of B's and C's. Or I'm going to study so many hours a day. Or on an anniversary. We're going to set aside more time to be with each other rather than to be shuffling and sh uh, shuffling children back and forth. Or New Year's Day resolutions. We laughingly say, I'm going to stop eating things that are bad for me, or I'm going to stop drinking, or I'm going to stop this, that, or sometimes it's taking on something. But the New Year's resolution that I hear in these texts is that really to be new and to be created again is based in love and it's based in reconciliation. It's based in being honest with one another as when someone sins against you or you sin against another, to go to them and have a talk and listen and share with one another in love about what is wrong. And sometimes you're not heard or you don't hear the other. Sometimes we each need help. And so we bring along one or two others to help the conversation. And then sometimes even the whole church gets involved. Have any of you been reading the Episcopal news lately? Like in the last few days? I hate to bring this up. I hate to bring this up. But it's in the news. 
Uh, the bishop, what's called the bishop provisional in the Diocese of East and Western Michigan, was divorced some years ago. And I don't know what the reaction of his sons was back then, or his wife. But he has now, some couple of years later, decided uh, to remarry. And all of a sudden, this enmity has risen up within his family, so that his sons have started a website that makes all sorts of accusations against this man about how he was abusive to them and how he was abusive to their mother and how he has not been held to account for having done these things. And this bishop agreed to undergo what, what we in the church call title, called Title IV disciplinary process. It's, it's sort of going to the church and saying, we need help figuring this out. So the church, the national church, the big church, has been investigating this whole thing. They've gone to this, these son's websites, they've been talking to them, they've been talking to the bishop, he's undergone psychological exams, he's gone, undergone other interviews and other exams. They're all in the middle of this. But as of a few days ago, the national church, um, through the presiding bishop, put restrictions on the bishop and said, until we get this settled, you cannot perform as an ordained minister. And then, a day or so after that, he resigned voluntarily from his position, again, until all these things are sorted out. Now that gives the Episcopal Church, once again, a great reputation, um, because we're in the news about a bishop supposedly abusing his children, these sorts of things. And I don't know the answer to any of this. I have met this bishop. Seems like a fine man. It's hard to know what goes on in the confines of one's home. But we might say this is an instance of where somebody who is demanding some sort of reconciliation or admission of guilt or don't quite know what they want has taken it to the church. And so the church has a responsibility as a whole to mediate, to try for reconciliation with people. This church has an experience of that, some of you well remember. And people were, for the most part, reconciled. But the reason and the difference, I would say, between those two cases, the one that I'm talking about with the bishop and the one that happened here, is whether or not there is love. The people who were gathered here so many years ago we're all motivated by love for one another and love for this church. And as best I can figure out, at least publicly, the situation that's going on in the national church is not characterized by love. On one side, it's characterized by very angry and hurt children. And I understand that as being a child of divorce. And on the other side is a church that has a process and you have to go through that process. But the church has a process 
the reconciliation because conflict can either be small or it can be huge. But our reconciliation is not just steps that we take, but steps that are taken in love. So as we enter into these new years or the different sort of new years that happen in our lives, Think about um, the new year as, or think about your resolution for the new year, whatever one it is, as a re resolution to love, to love another. Because in that way, you are doing what God desires for all of us for the path that God desires for all of us to walk on. Everything is summed up, as it says, in love your neighbor as yourself. As a Michigan State fan, I would love it as the Big Ten season approaches. If all you Michigan fans would love us MSU people as yourselves, until that Michigan means MSU game. <laughs> Children, love your teachers as yourself. Love your instructors as yourself. We want to love our partners as ourselves. We want to remember where the source of love is in our lives. So I don't know when your next new year is. I know some of you have birthdays coming up. As you think about your resolutions in all of your new years, think about love. And all the rest will follow behind. Amen. Let's pray. <laughs> Would you join me in confessing the historic faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That we all be one one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. 
We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nation that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in our heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For peace in Ukraine, Chipper Perkins and family, Kim Fraser, Gia Holgren, Sherry Novak, Ellen, Ramona, Emma, Pam and family, Kelly Swan, Eric Leslie and Charlotte Milton, Amber Gunderson, Lily McCall, Ben Tucker, Amy Jordan, the Pong family, victims of the earthquake in Mexico. In the Episcopal Church, we pray for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, and our bishop, Bonnie Perry. In the diocesan and Anglican cycles of prayer, St. Mary's in the Hills, Lake Orion, Trinity Church, Farmington, Farmington Hills, and the Church of Ireland. Thanksgiving for the birthdays of Julie Lowry and Julia Shea. You may add your own petitions at this time. For Barb and Ross, who have COVID. For Beth Ward, whose stepson's funeral is this week. Our loving creator and giver of all good gifts, bless our parish, strengthen our faith, and grant us the spirit of Christian stewardship so that we may give generously of our time, talent, and treasure to spread your kingdom here in our church and throughout the world. For this we pray to the Lord. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with the sign of the peace of God. Good morning again. There are announcements in your bulletin and hopefully you receive some at home. 
uh, they're on page 14. Um, the big news is ice cream after church. And uh, having uh, observed the preparation for this ice cream social, I can tell you that there are, I think, four or five different kinds of ice cream. Oh. Well, <laughs> you'll have to speak to the management. Uh, but one of them is called Spartan Swirl. <laughs> so don't everybody race to that one right away. Uh, four or five kinds of ice cream plus uh, seven or eight ty types of toppings. So by mixing and matching, you could create quite a few different uh, combinations. Pardon me, David? We can have 32 different kinds if you've got eight toppings and four ice cream. <laughs> but if you put two toppings on one ice cream, things go expen exponentially, don't they? Right. Yes. So anyway, come on down and uh, have some ice cream. We also have fruit and muffins and things like that. And uh, we also will do just a short short updates on um, some few important things in the congregation. I'm going to be out of town Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week for a clergy conference in St. Louis. Um, so contact Wendy, wherever she is, um, if you have any pastoral emergencies and she can get a hold of me. Uh, in October, and November, December, we have some important uh, events coming up and I want to start uh, encouraging you to put these on your calendar. Uh, on October 7th, we're going to have a, a pride picnic. It's gonna be at lunchtime. In the other times we've done pride picnics, we've had them in the evening, like from five till seven, something like that. But we're gonna have a lunch picnic, uh, but it'll be grilled hot dogs and chips and drinks and whatnot. And my encouragement to you is, of course, we want to invite the LGBT community, but we also consider all of you to be allies of LGBT persons. And so we want to make sure that you come as well to exemplify with your presence, your acceptance, your uh, love, your welcome of LGBT folks uh, in our community and in our church. So um, we'll have some games and things like that, giveaways, whatnot, and um, I think it would be really good for you to come to that. Uh, on the 31st of October, we'll pass out treats along with other businesses and whatnot in the town over in the gazebo. Um, so that'll be fun. And in November, December, we're gonna have fundraisers. One of them is Pampered Chef. But what do you call it? Cooking? It's, it's uh, cookware, it's cook food, it's all sorts of that. Yeah, so um, what you believe? hopefully Wendy will have maybe catalogs or yeah, ways to have them in the Okay. And then uh, the cookie walk, we're going to resurrect in December and Wendy and is it Norma? Norma and Jan. And Jan. Yeah. Heading that up, Janet, raises her hand. So if you're interested or are going to be voluntold uh, to help us with the cookies, uh, see Wendy or Jan. How many of you have been to the Bishop's house? Well, here's a good opportunity to check it out. Um, on Sunday, October 8th, uh, they're having a reception at her house for people who have uh, put the church in their will, for instance, tied, tied some of their estate into their will, or other, some other, uh, what do they call those? Some other instruments right. of plan giving. Is that right? In a trust, other sorts of things. So uh, doing that is a way for you to keep supporting the church 
after you have died. And as we know, the church struggles more and more um, to be monetarily solvent, not just this church, but churches all around the country and the world. One way you can impact that is by um, altering your will if you need to do that, or writing a will and putting the church in it. And then um, come over to Bonnie and Susan's house on the 8th and uh, be thanked about having done that. And everybody seen the little free library out there? It is getting a lot of activity. Roger, I saw you. Did I see you this morning? Mm -hmm. Cleaning off the seats out there? I was right. trying to try it off and off so I could sit down, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the new Adirondack chair, the new old Adirondack chair out there. Well, we have children's books and uh, adult books. And as I said, there's a lot of traffic. I go out, you know, once or twice a week when I'm when I'm here, and there's always a different variety of books there. So um, feel free to uh, go take a look and to donate books, except your textbooks, encyclopedias, or dictionaries. <laughs> and there you see some of the needs for the extra food. Are there other announcements? Okay. We have a communion or an offertory hymn, I believe. It's on page eight. I invite you to sit as we sing this. Um, it's the uh, prayer of St. Francis, and uh, then we'll continue with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. <laughs> you as always to come forward when you think you are ready to receive the sacrament. Uh, and we won't go row by row, but whenever you're ready to come forward. Thank you. 
and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and forever. Amen. Amen.
life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve God and the world. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.